I made a big, big pot of potato squash soup yesterday, and this is going to be my lunch for work today. Whenever I make soup or pretty much anything that tends to kind of like stick to or just stay at the bottom of the pan or the pot, like in this case, um, I always use this rubber spatula. This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen because it costs nothing and you can do so many things with it. It's, it's insane and like my, one of my favorite ways, yeah, look at how much thing is left in the pot and if I don't use this or just a spoon I won't be able to take everything out of it so it's the perfect anti-waste tool look at that it's clean <laughs> trying to record this segment oh my god I look tired hi <laughs> been trying to record this segment for I don't know three four times I don't know I just I just can't do it but anyways I just came back from the grocery store um, and uh, I went straight after work because honestly I don't know about you but I hate absolutely hate going to the grocery store during the weekend. I don't know if you watched my latest video in which I showed you that my weekly groceries um, were purchased for a very low budget uh, of 20 euros. Well, this week there weren't any good coupons that I could use. This week, kind of like, I'm sorry, Lido, but this week you were a huge disappointment. But anyways, I still managed to make it with a budget of 25 euros 50, which I think it's really good. And I also got some pretty interesting things or unusual, I would say. Otherwise, it's pretty standard. I got, for example, vegan butter. And to make a little change in my breakfast, I felt like I could go with whole wheat toast. And this was on sale because it's about to expire so 111 for this huge bag of holy toast um, seemed like a really good deal got myself a can of beer because you have to enjoy your life sometimes and uh, yeah and also something that's really interesting I think to show you is this one avocado oil which no I actually don't use in the kitchen I use it to remove my makeup. And honestly, of all of the oils that I used, not many, but still, this feels like the perfect makeup remover. It feels extremely luxurious. It's not thick at all, but actually it's quite thin in consistency. It feels really good. It smells really nicely, and I haven't been using it in quite a while because I 
couldn't manage to find it again at Lidl and I think the price it's still pretty fair for this bottle 379 for 250 milliliters and this lasts me about three months which I think it's pretty good this is the moment where I make a little bit of appreciation to myself for being a strong determined woman who didn't buy any crap at the grocery store despite being a little hungry so kudos to me Do this together. Hmm? Mommy got some stuff on Vinted. You want to do this together? You want to unbox, do the unboxing together? Take that as a yes. As long as there's a box involved, of course, she's going to say yes. How is this thing even packed? I know she's... There she is. There she is. I actually had to realize recently that I don't have any hoodies. Or just plain simple hoodies. I don't have them. Um, so this is hoodie number one. And I got from the exact same person who happened to be, to have two exact hoodies, but in different colors. I also bought a black one because if you know me, then 95% whoops 95% of the times I buy stuff in black so anyways now I'm gonna try these on and obviously I'm gonna throw them in a the wash also because they're covered in like weird cardboard fluff I'm also in the process of putting things on vinted to sell uh, recently I sold cashmere blend sweater, a backpack, a pair of jeans, a boyfriend jeans that were, that was too large for me. And then I sold, what else did I sell? Um, another sweater. Like I did sell a few things recently and I'm putting more stuff online because I realized that recently I'm in a really good place and I feel like I want to show how good I feel by the way I dress and obviously I over the years um by having like a smaller wardrobe and you know kind of like living with less stuff I, I learned how to develop my own style when it comes to wardrobe and getting dressed and stuff and that style it's still mine but it's going to change and adapt according to you know, how I feel and who I am as a person in that point in life. And recently I found myself, or at least this year, um, I've been on an emotional roller coaster. By the way, all of the background noises, it's my cat playing with the box, obviously. I've been on an emotional roller coaster and after going through a really, really rough patch, somebody hurt me really badly. I lost some weight and some of the clothes that I bought before that happened um, don't fit me any longer. And... I am in the process of updating my wardrobe a little because of that practical issue, but also because I'm in a really good place right now and I want to buy clothes that show that and I am experimenting a little more with, you know, prints or just with styles in general. Obviously, I still consider myself someone who... I, I've been hating labels, people, like minimalist. Okay, yes, you could consider me that, or you could call me that if you want. I still consider myself someone who lives with less stuff than usual and who lives consciously. So obviously the stuff that I buy is kind of like still with a conscious mindset. But I don't 
feel guilty because I want to buy stuff, you know. Uh, at the beginning of this lifestyle change, I would feel myself guilty if I would buy something that it wasn't. Hello, can you please let me talk to the camera? Thank you. I would feel myself guilty if I would buy stuff that didn't have necessarily like a practical use that I didn't 100% need, but it was something out of, you know, I want to feel pretty, so I'm going to buy that. Well, screw that. It doesn't, everything that I own doesn't necessarily have to be something that is something that I need. Because obviously, even though I have less stuff than usual, I still have more than I actually need. Um, but, you know, not everything has to always be practical. Sometimes you just want to buy something. And again, I do it consciously. But sometimes it's just nice to buy something because you feel good and you want to keep feeling good. Wearing that, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of when it comes to that. So that's why over the course of the past couple of years, um, especially because I am a content creator that has been focusing on, you know, minimalism and sustainable living. I hate labels because, I mean, it's like you're no longer allowed to grow and evolve as a person. Well, screw that. I obviously still am going to stay true to myself and what I believe in. But at some point, I mean, come on. So... Yeah, like I've been blabbering for five minutes just to tell you that I've been buying a little, a few clothes and this is just a part of the clothes that I've been getting on Vinted recently. But I'm also in the process of selling a few things and I think that between today and tomorrow I'm going to put a few things online and maybe I'm going to show you what I am going to put online. Well, apparently, um, when you're over 35 and you go out and you do a night out and you go dancing and stuff, this is what your voice sounds like for the next couple of days. <laughs> so I apologize for any inconvenience. What I wanted to say is I've been trying to read this book. Um, I'm actually really slow at reading it because this book is like really packed with information. It's not exactly like a relaxing read. But I have to be honest, I'm like 120 pages in it. And aside from the fact that I skipped a few pages because they were just boring financial things that I could barely understand. So I thought, well, probably doesn't hurt anyone if I skip a few pages. Um, but I'm, I was expecting this book. This book is called like Amazon Behind the Scenes. And I was expecting this book to be some kind of like a negative criticism essay on Amazon and all of the like policies and how the company works, which it actually is explained, like how the company works and philosophy and structure and all of that. But it almost seems like the person who wrote this is actually like praising Amazon, which I think it's really weird. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, also because like the cover of this book is really promising. You see that? So I'm a little disappointed.
What are you doing in there? Uh -huh. Good. We're going to the vet next month. So I thought that maybe we could be friends with the carrying bag, right? And not just hate it because we only take it out when we have to go to the vet. Huh? How's hanging out in there? Comfy? Good. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> no, we don't play with this one. Mommy needs it. Mommy needs it. Mi serve questo, devo misurare i vestiti, amore. It's not a toy. I'm sorry. Well, hello vlog. I have been editing. I've been also eating popcorn, which you can no longer see because I ate all of them. <laughs> I need to start getting ready because today I have my creative writing class. I am really tired. <laughs> I really don't want to go, but I will go anyways because I paid for it. <laughs> so, and also, I think it's going to be quite nice if I you know, dedicate some time to this. After all, I did it to invest on myself and on my passion. So, you know, I think I'm pretty sure that once I get there, I, I will feel already much better. There's something that I wanted to talk to you about before I head out. Uh, yesterday, I completely forgot to film any segment yesterday evening, but yesterday evening, I went to meet the uh, book swap group that I usually meet every month to month and a half. If this book swap group exists, it's all because of my amazing friend, Teresa. Hi, Teresa, once again, if you're watching. She put together this whole thing and it's just amazing because, you know, we are Italian speaking people uh, meeting with a passion for reading. And I'm pretty sure, you know, if you live as a foreigner in a country, that it's not your home country and the language spoken is not the language that you grew up speaking. It's difficult sometimes for you to find reads in your own language. So I think that putting together a book swap group with people that speak your same mother language is an amazing thing because you get to meet new people, create friendships and share something beautiful like books. And I got a pretty great or what seems pretty promising book about uh, traveling in the East, written by an Italian journalist, Paolo Rumiz. I don't know him, but it kind of seemed really promising. All of this just to tell you something about a question that I get asked so much ever since I started doing YouTube, which is, where do you actually come from? Probably like a lot of you already uh, could notice from my accent. I do have a little accent when I speak in English because English uh, is not my mother language. I was born and raised in the Republic of San Marino, which some of you might not be familiar with. It's basically a tiny piece of land 
geographically located in Italy, but it doesn't belong to it. So it's an independent country. But the language that is spoken there is Italian. So my mother language is Italian. So buongiorno a tutti, forse non lo sapevate, ma io sono cresciuta parlando italiano. The reason why I speak English very, very fluently is because my mother was born and raised in the US. No, I wasn't exactly raised as a bilingual because when it You know, in the mid 80s, I already had a foreign name. I had glasses and this weird lipoma, which I had in my eye ever since I was born. So I was already, I already had enough elements to, you know, to be made fun of. So I didn't really want to be that different. I just wanted to fit in and go on with my life. But then I just started to pick up English. I guess it's really, it's It's always been fairly easy for me to pick up languages. My grandparents migra migrated to, to the U.S. when they were really young. They lived there for about 20 years, and that's where my mom was born and raised, New York City. And now I've been living in Berlin, Germany for a few years. So yes, I also speak German fluently. That's that. I thought I could just pack everything into this impromptu little Q&A. despite waking up late because I didn't hear the second alarm clock. So yes, I turned off both alarms. I managed to prepare today's lunch. I had some frozen peas and then I added zucchini, spring onions and cherry tomatoes. And that on the bottom is some leftover rice that I had in the fridge. <laughs> It's so good to see you. Hi, mommy. It's good to see you too. Ciao, amore. Ciao, signorina. 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 Ciao, signor